If you pay close attention to the vessels in these clips, you'll probably notice how most of them have their pilot house at the stern of the vessel, whereas on other vessels, they have their pilot house closer to the bow. This is especially noticeable with Great Lakes freighters. They originally had their bridge at the bow until the 1970s when they had their bridge at the stern. So why is a stern bridge better than a forward bridge? Stay tuned to find out. Before we start the video, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you are new here, and turn on post notifications so you never miss any new uploads, because less than 1% of the people who watch my content are subscribed. So if you find this video interesting or even enjoy it, consider subscribing. I put a lot of effort into these documentaries and videos, and subscribing is a completely free way to support my work. Anyway, enjoy the video. First reason why these vessels have stern pilot houses is because of safety. Because if the ship is in rough weather, the crew are in the most protected part of the vessel. Also, the engines and machinery are in the stern of the ship. So it's very convenient to have the accommodation close to the engines, with the lifeboats and rafts close to the bridge as well. Which can also maximize cargo capacity, since if you were to have a forward bridge, you would have a little less cargo space. But this design does have some cons as well. For example, if the ship is caught in rough weather, the cargo hatches are more exposed to being breached as the waves crash over the bow. This is exactly what happened to the British bulk carrier Derbyshire in 1980. She was lost with all hands off the coast of Japan in Typhoon Orchid, when it was determined that her cargo hatches were breached after the waves pounded her bow, because she lacked a foc'sle. Even if a vessel doesn't lack a foc'sle, a forward bridge would give the cargo holds more protection. Plus, a stern bridge doesn't give you as much visibility, especially if you have containers stacked on the deck or you're sailing through a fog bank. Now let's talk about why some vessels have bridges at the bow. Unlike bulk carriers which store their cargo deep inside the holds, large container ships have their cargo stacked on deck. Because if you, if you were to place the bridge at the stern, the containers would obscure your view. But don't get me wrong, there are some container vessels that have their bridge at the stern, but larger ones have ones closer to the bow. Anyway, simply increasing the height of the bridge wouldn't solve the problem. Having a forward bridge would eliminate the risk that the containers would obscure visibility. However, the bridge is well protected due to its height above the deck, and the lifeboats are still close to the bridge. Plus, there is a second superstructure over the engine that some of the crew could be stationed at. Now let's talk about passenger vessels such as cruise ships and ferries. There are specific reasons why they have forward bridges. Unlike boat carriers and other cargo vessels, most ferries and cruise ships have entire superstructures that take up more than two-thirds of the ship's length, which has been like this for decades. If you were to put the bridge at the stern, you wouldn't even be able to see the bow of the vessel, so it makes more sense to place the bridge near the bow. Same with auto carriers, they have a whole superstructure above the hull, so a forward bridge makes the most sense, although the engine and lifeboats are all the way at the stern of the vessel. But like we mentioned earlier, we didn't see any Great Lakes freighters with stern bridges until the late 1970s, with the last forward pilot house Laker being the Stuart J. Corps, introduced in 1972. Great Lakes vessels have always been known to use much older methods of building, transportation, and design, and still continue to this day. Even when we started seeing some of the first ocean-going freighters having stern bridges, most Lakers still kept their traditional design until the 1970s, as mentioned earlier. And as of today, there are only about 24 pilot house Lakers still in operation on the Great Lakes. But even though the, the position of the bridge has changed over time, it's likely that technology will progress, and we might even see some vessels using different methods of energy that require the bridge to be moved forwards. I hope you enjoyed this video, and make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss any new uploads. And stay tuned for more videos like this one. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.